The Russian command is transferring militants from the private military company Wagner to the Kursk region of Russia to resist the Ukrainian armed forces. As Russian media indicate, the transfer of Wagner units was reported by war correspondent Yegor Guzenko. It is noted that he published a video with mercenaries signing it with the words, Did I say there would be good news? Well, here it is for you. Wagner Group fighters are returning to Russia. I will tell you about further surprises soon. In the mentioned video, allegedly representatives of the PMC confirm that they are returning to the Russian Federation to the Kursk region. We'll be there soon. It'll be hot, but we'll have fire extinguishers, said one of the militants. At the same time as Baza writes, with reference to other Russian war correspondents, now the part of Sudza, where the shooting battles are taking place, is under the control of Ukraine. Ukrainian formations have occupied the western half of Sudza. Now the line of combat contact runs along the dam area. It is a lowland through which a fairly small river Sudza flows, said war correspondent Mikhail Zinchenko. According to Zinchenko, this area is also defended by local militia units along with Russian military personnel. According to his colleague Yuri Kotenkov, most of Sudza is under the control of the Ukrainian military and tanks are present on the territory of this settlement. Russian blogger Yuri Podolyaka reports that Sudza is full of Ukrainian armed forces soldiers. Sudza is completely lost for us and it is a vital logistics hub and the enemy is trying to play this advantage. From Sudza, among other things, there is a road to the north to Lagov, along which he is also trying to advance, the blogger writes. According to some reports, the occupiers managed to stop the Ukrainian armed forces in the area of the workers' settlement of Korenevo. Intense fighting is taking place along the Loknia Nikol Sky Viktorovka Kruglenkoi line. According to the resource, before everyone, well, almost. The Russian Defense Ministry claims that units of the North Group of Troops, together with the FSB agencies, continue to destroy units of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Sudza and Koronevsky districts of the Kursk region, directly adjacent to the Russian-Ukrainian border. The U.S. has deployed a dozen F-A-18 fighters to a military base in the Middle East. This move is part of the Pentagon's efforts to protect Israel from potential attacks by Iran and its affiliates, reports the Times of Israel. According to an American official, the F-A-18 aircraft and the E-2D Hawkeye reconnaissance plane departed from an aircraft carrier in the Gulf of Oman and arrived at an undisclosed base. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin ordered the increased military presence in the region due to concerns about escalation in the Middle East following the recent killings of a senior Hezbollah commander in Lebanon and the Hamas political leader in Iran, likely as a result of Israeli strikes. Both groups are known to be supported by Iran. The U.S. Navy's deployment is expected to be temporary, with an F-22 fighter squadron en route from its home base in Alaska to the same base. Approximately a dozen F-22s are anticipated to arrive in the Middle East in the coming days. The Times of Israel reports that it is unclear how long all the aircraft will remain at the base together, with the duration likely depending on developments in the coming days. Earlier, Pentagon spokeswoman Sabrina Singh told reporters Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin will be directing multiple force movements to provide additional support to Israel and increase protection for U.S. troops in the region. The White House, in a statement, said President Joe Biden reaffirmed his commitment to Israel's security against all threats from Iran, including its proxy terrorist groups Hamas, Hezbollah and the Houthis. It's currently not clear what form an Iranian attack could take and whether it could be as significant as the April drone and missile attack, which was largely intercepted by Israel and its allies. The United States is doing everything possible to make sure that this situation does not boil over. White House Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer said in an interview with ABC, Part of what makes back-channel messages and conversations effective is that they need to stay private, Finer told ABC. So I won't speak to the details of the diplomatic activity that is underway other than to say in close coordination and conjunction with our Israeli allies and other partners and allies in the region. 